Thank you, brother. Thank you. Great job, Brian. Great job. And uh, just so thankful to be here tonight. Still rejoicing over what God did last night in the service. And we are praising God for his goodness to us again tonight. I'm glad that I did choose the Lord. Choose you this day whom you will serve. It's a choice you have to make. Nobody's going to go to heaven because God makes them go. Talked to a fellow one time and I said, when are you going to get saved? And he said, well, when God does to me what he did to daddy, I'll get saved. I said, well, what did the Lord do to your dad? He said, well, he was plowing on the tractor and said a bolt of lightning hit him and knocked him off the tractor down in the furrow row there and said on his back he called out to God. And I said, you know, God don't need a bolt of lightning to save you. He sent his son. And if you don't turn to Jesus and trust him, you're without hope and of all men most miserable. We're just so thrilled to have each one of you here tonight. Have several from our home church up as well. Ted and Marty and Ralph and Jody's in and Larry and Judy. Good to have all of you with us. And of course, Brian mentioned that he brought Abby along uh, tonight as well. And it's always good. good I think this first time Abby's got to go with me and Brian anywhere. Bless your heart, honey. You'll never be the same again. (laughs) Someone said, you ought not joke in the pulpit like that. If I don't joke in church, I'd never get a laugh. I live in church. I'm in church constantly. And uh, pray for Brian and I. We have a funeral tomorrow. Then he'll be there at the home church tomorrow night and uh, overseeing everything while I'm down here in the service with you. Then I have another funeral on Thursday and back down here on Thursday night. So pray that God will help us. The Lord will use us. A lot of dear friends going on, but I'm so glad it's always, it's always so different when you can stand and say, I know where they went. That always makes the difference. And uh, you just pray that God will use us for their unsaved family. We have some people that don't go to church anywhere that's really troubled that'll be there in those services and pray that God will use us to present the gospel to them because that's what their family wanted more than anything else. Well, let's look in the word of God tonight. I'm preaching on this subject, the glory behind the story. In John chapter nine, you know this account of a miracle that's there. Our brother talked about a miracle. Uh, God's helping him in this month and the Lord, the Lord does help us. And sometimes, I don't know, Gary, this may be a help to you tonight when you're going through those things and you've prayed and believed God and you know God's gonna take care of all of it, but still you don't see the evidence of it or it's not revealed yet, sometimes that's a difficult thing. Why is it that some people pray and are healed instantly and other people, they're healed through time? It's a good question. It's okay to ask the question. And uh, I'm not about to tell you that I'm gonna answer all of your questions tonight, but I know somebody who can answer every question you've got. He is the answer to all things. When Eddie Hicks was living, uh, he run a drug program down in Florida at their church. It's the most unique church I've ever seen. I've never seen anything like their church. And uh, Eddie was interviewed by a reporter years ago and the reporter sat there and he had a, had a little saying on a plaque there behind him. And the reporter kept looking at him and said, uh, said I, I see there you've got that plaque up there. Jesus is the answer. And said, I've got a question for you. And Eddie said, what's that? And said, well, what's the question? If Jesus is the answer, what's the question? And Eddie said, you don't get it. He's the answer. It don't matter what the question is. (laughs) And that's the truth. He's the answer in all things. John chapter 9 and verse 1. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, Who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither hath this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world. Now remember, Jesus is standing in front of a man that's been blind all of his life a man that knows nothing but darkness. And standing before a man that has lived his whole life in darkness, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. I am what you have never seen. I am everything you've ever longed for and everything you've ever hoped for. I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, 
Now watch this next phrase closely. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay and said unto him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way therefore and washed and came seeing the neighbors therefore and they which before had seen him that he was blind said, is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, this is he. Others said, he's like him, but he said, I am he. Well, for time's sake, I'm gonna stop reading right there. This man that had been born blind had never seen a flower. He'd never seen his mother's face, his father's face. He didn't know what a beautiful sunrise looked like or a sunset, blind all of his life, total darkness. He'd never seen the face of a baby, he'd never seen the beauty of God's creation. He was in total darkness. And when they are confronted with this man, they have a serious problem. He is blind and they can do nothing about it. Have you ever got to the place in your life that you were confronted with something that was outside of your realm of ability that you could do nothing about it to change it? It was too big of a problem. Now some of you are sitting saying, well, I don't understand what you mean by that. Well, if you've ever had a family member that's hooked on drugs, you know what I'm talking about. If you've ever had somebody that's been diagnosed with a disease that the doctor said, I'm sorry, we have no cure, you know what I'm talking about. Some things are beyond the ability of medical science and beyond the knowledge of man and the wisdom of man. Some things only God can take care of. And they could not help this man. A lot of people are looking to others and they're hoping that others will help them. But in the end, as much as they look to them, they find out that no matter how good they are and how much they even love God, sometimes the answer can only come from the Lord and the help can only come from the Lord. Sometimes we look to people for counsel and there's nothing wrong with that. But ultimately, I think the Lord has the answer that we're looking for. So here they are and they say, Lord, we cannot, we cannot fix it. So we're bringing him to you to do one of two things. Either fix it, heal him of his blindness, or explain it. Who did sin? This man? Wait a minute, he was born blind. How could he have sinned when he was in his mother's womb? You realize how desperate people get sometimes? If they don't know the answer, they'll make one up. Who sinned, this man or his parents? But the Lord said, neither, but that the works of the Lord may be manifest in him. Jesus said, you're, you're, you're approaching it all wrong. See, they go to the answer and they ask the answer a question. And the question they ask is the wrong question. Jesus said, you're looking at it wrong. It's not why is he like this? It really doesn't matter why you've got your life in the position that it's in and it doesn't matter why you're at the place that you're at. We spend too much time wondering about the why. Jesus said, don't overlook this. It's not why he is like this. You're missing the real answer. He's come to me and he's not going to stay like this. He's like this now, but he'll not be like this forever. Jesus said, I can do what you cannot do. I'm not limited in my power nor in my ability. It's not why is he like this? It is the simple fact 